a manufacturer wishes to claim that its batteries last longer than 1,000 hours. A random sample of 900 batteries has a mean lifetime of 980 hours and a standard deviation of 100 hours. Set up the corresponding hypothesis test at a 5% level of significance and interpret your result. Now, how do we set up a hypothesis test? First, we're going to have a probability distribution for our population. We're going to have an educated guess for the unknown population mean mu. Then, we set up the sampling distribution of the mean using mu as the mean. From there, we're going to draw a random sample. We'll compute the mean of that random sample. Then we find out where it is in our distribution. From there, that's going to tell us whether we believe our educated guess or not. Of course, it's more involved than that, so we break it down the steps. The first step is to set up the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. In our case, we need to be careful. The statement of interest includes an inequality. So the manufacturer wishes to claim that the unknown population mean mu is greater than 1,000. That means we use a one-tail test. How does that affect the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis? For the null hypothesis, that's just going to be our educated guess at the unknown population mean. It's always going to be stated as an equality. So here we'll have H0 is the statement mu equals 1,000. That we have a one-tail test is reflected in the alternative hypothesis. So that'll be an inequality. We have to figure out which one to go with. Let's take the point of view of the manufacturer. It wants to claim that the unknown population mean is greater than 1,000. What's the worst case scenario? Well, there could be a challenger who tries to show that mu is less than or equal to 1,000 with a 95% level of confidence, okay, or 5% level of significance. How will it do that? First, it sets up the sampling distribution of the mean with mean equal to 1,000. Then we're going to set up two regions. So what we'll do is we're going to take the area with the left tail that gives us area 0.95. So it's our 95%. This region, we're going to call the acceptance region for the null hypothesis. The other region is going to be our rejection region for the null hypothesis. Then we draw a random sample. We're going to compute the mean. Then we're going to take that sample mean and see where it falls in our intervals. Now, if it falls in this first interval, then we're going to accept the null hypothesis, and then the conclusion is that the mean mu is less than or equal to 1,000 with a level of confidence of 95%. So in that case, the manufacturer loses the challenge. Otherwise, we're going to reject the null hypothesis, so we're going to accept the alternative hypothesis. So in that case, that's going to have to be what the manufacturer wants. So our alternative hypothesis is going to be that mu is greater than 1,000. OK, so you'll note the mu greater than 1,000 lines up with our rejection region. OK, one other thing to point out, the 5% level of significance. That's going to mean there's a 5% chance for a type 1 error. So a type 1 error is just a case where we have the null hypothesis is actually true, but our conclusion is to reject it. So that's going to be the chance of a false negative. Now, let's take a look at the sampling distribution of the mean. Our sample size is 900, so that's greater than or equal to 30. Our distribution is almost normal. 
the mean is equal to the population mean. We're assuming that's equal to 1,000 for the standard deviation. Because n is large, we're going to approximate the population standard deviation with the sample standard deviation. Then I divide by the square root of the sample size. So we'll have 100 over 30 or 10 thirds. With this, we compute the z value. So we know the distribution is almost a normal distribution. So I'm interested in finding the z value. Now with our sample, the mean was equal to 980. So that's our x bar. So when I work out the z value from this, we're going to get a minus 6. OK, next step, we set up the acceptance and rejection regions. So we're going to have standard normal distribution. The idea is going to be we want a 95% level of confidence. So that means I want the area that we're testing for the acceptance region to be 0.95 in here. Now, for the standard normal distribution, the way we get that okay, is going to have a z value of 1.64. So our acceptance region is going to be all z less than or equal to 1.64. Our rejection region is going to be z greater than 1.64. Now, for the sample that we just drew, we have z value is a minus 6. So we're well within the acceptance region. So our conclusion is that we accept the null hypothesis at a 5% level of significance. So for the manufacturer, this means that he loses his court case. Okay, the conclusion of the court is that mu is less than or equal to 1,000 with 95% confidence. So that's good enough for the court. 